Good morning, and welcome to Resurrection Episcopal Church. I'm Mother Leslie Stewart, and we're so happy to have you with us today. You've picked a good day to be with us. Our bishop, Bishop George R. Sumner, is preaching for us this morning. And I would also like to wish you a very happy Labor Day weekend. You can find our service bulletin on our website, on our Facebook page, or at the top of this post. And once you have that, we have everything that we need to begin worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you and also with me. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts, for as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, 
So you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of God's word. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 12, starting at the first verse. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in portion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb the same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response appointed today is Psalm 149. We will read it responsively by whole verse. Hallelujah. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the congregation of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in his maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to help him with tremble and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people and adorns the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them be joyful on their beds. Let the praises of God be in their throat and a two-edged sword in their hand to wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings in chains and their nobles with links of iron, to inflict on them the judgment decreed to this glory for all his faithful people. Hallelujah.
A reading from the book of Romans, chapter 13, starting at the eighth verse. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is. How it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and lists not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. gospel reading is from St. Matthew, chapter 18, beginning at the 15th verse. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, Take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
name of God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. The renewal of the Holy Spirit can touch our feelings, our memories, or our minds. It can come from us from unlikely directions. One example of this in the modern church is the church basement. When I was rector, it was there that three nights a week various kinds of AA meetings got together. As you know, with only a tangential relationship to the church per se. But in a certain way, they were a boost to our ecclesial memory, an antidote to the church's own amnesia. You see, at the heart of the church's message is grace. Our recognition that we cannot save ourselves, try though we may, and the shocking truth that God utterly forgives us while we are yet sinners. Think of that wonderful painting of Rembrandt's of the father embracing the returning prodigal son, both of them now wounded by the experience, and you see the heart of the gospel. But the church is inhabited by human beings. We do not continue uh, to grab hold of grace sometime, but rather return to plan A, depending on our own resources. And we need to be brought back to the central message. We need a jolt to our memory, which is called renewal. Now, AA does that because it tells addicts they are in themselves bound. Although in this, they are not so utterly different than all the rest of us. Being such, God has reached out to them in their powerlessness. And now that they are touched, grabbed hold of, claimed by God, they need to strive day to day to live a life consistent with that intervention. Now what they lack is a clear recognition that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has made this possible. And that's no small matter. Still, up from the basement, for several generations has come the reminder of the idea of grace. As a result, we come to see more clearly what power we do and don't have. That's the point. In this regard, think of the famous serenity prayer, popular in AA. It has been attributed to the modern theologian Reinhard, Reinhold Niebuhr, but it really goes all the way back, I believe, to the medieval Thomas Aquinas. Lord, give me the serenity to accept the things I cannot save, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to tell the difference. Here, AA, via Thomas, is schooling Christian spirituality. This prayer came to mind for me uh, because today's readings all have something to do with, with the wisdom, discipline, humility, and vision that go into making a witness. Let me explain what I mean. Another foundation stone of the Christian faith is that we should share the truth God has revealed to us. Don't hide your light under a bushel, says Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew. What we have seen and heard and touched, we ought to tell to our neighbor. Witnessing is speaking our truth, which actually we believe is truth for the world, as we have seen and heard it. But what we cannot do is make others hear it or make them respond to it in the way that we think they should. I'm reminded of the figure of Cassandra in ancient Greek tragedy. She was cursed to know the doom that was coming on the city, but unable to get people to listen. Things aren't quite that bad, but we feel um, something like that occasionally in our lives. But this is the point. Our calling is to witness. And having done so, we have to let go. We cannot make others hear, nor can we know how our witness will be received in the future. The Old Testament is full of prophecies which were sealed, unable to be heard, only to be received in another generation, sometimes on the far side of judgment. This morning, we focus on witnessing in our readings, the need to speak, the discipline also of letting go once we have spoken. In fact, most spirituality has some relation to letting go. Let's see what the readings teach us about getting God's role and our lesser role straight when it comes to making 
your testimony or your witness. Let's begin with Ezekiel 33. The prophet is like a watchman. His job is to scan the horizon and shout out when he or she sees a fire or an approaching army. And if the watchman sees it, he, he or she must not uh, keep quiet, but must speak. And if they do keep quiet, then the calamity that is coming will be laid at their doorstep. But if the people cannot hear or will not hear, then he or she has fulfilled their charge. Now when we read this passage, we know more than the watchman yet knows. And that is the advantage of us as readers of the Bible. We know that the people will not heed Ezekiel. We know that they will be dragged off into exile. We know that they will read the prophecies anew with more understanding. We know that they will struggle through centuries of waiting, after which the hope will finally be fulfilled in this surprising way so that the judgment comes to an end. The watchman can let go because of the sense of this bigger picture or wider vision. And it's similar with us. Only knowing that ultimately human history, including ours, is in God's hands can make it possible to surrender your testimony up even when this is unheard, or even when it's frustrating uh, to you. Second of all today, we've heard from the epistle to the Romans again. Not only may the watchman not be heard, he or she may be abused. He or she may live in danger. But they have to carry on. Paul offers a discipline, a camino, a way to continue as a disciple in love. But what does love mean for the disciple? He says that it means helping your neighbor, the person who, Luther says, is at your hand. It means a constant effort to put away resentment, anger, and grudge in your own heart. The watchman is working on himself or herself, too, emboldened to do so by grace. That's Paul's point. It means living, as with Ezekiel, forward with hope that surpasses what you and I can yet see. There is a discipline of love lived out toward with other sojourners, toward the neighbor, which involves working on your own heart, and all of that makes it possible for the watchman to make his or her witness and then let it go. This brings us to the gospel. It assumes a strong, thick account of the mutual commitment and accountability one to another in the body of Christ. We actually are each other's keepers in the body of Christ. I recall a story told by Professor Philip Turner friend of this diocese, about his time years ago in Uganda. A young professional was offered a great new job in another part of the country. He and his wife had to bring the question to their fellowship group to discern whether it truly was of God. Now we in our individualism would probably assume that the decision is ours, though I hope we would pray. But being so knit into the koinonia, that the decision was actually held in common. That is a surprise and a great gift. Maybe you've had a glimpse of that at moments in your life. There's something similar afoot in Matthew 18. If the Holy Spirit is in our midst, then we need to discern its movement together. And that includes the hard times when there is conflict in the body. We need to speak the truth in love, says Paul. We need to have help since we can't see it all and we have our own biases. And at some point we need to let it go, walk away, cut our losses, not in condemnation, but in recognition that God alone finally judges and that we cannot see the last inning of this game. But we do know that there resides grace, God's yes, which prevails even now. And God has put in our hands the proclamation of this decisive and powerful word, unlikely though we be to pronounce it. Matthew teaches us that the watchman is not as alone as the image of sitting up in a fire tower may lead you to believe. Serenity, courage, wisdom. 
They are all having to do with the calling to testify, to be a witness, long before Thomas Aquinas and stretching on even to our day. But the reality of grace undergirding all of this and covering over our mistakes is where we need to focus our minds and hearts today. The longer race is what we are witnesses to, which we also are running, whose, dis whose destination, even though um, it may seem, um, it may be frustrating when others cannot see it, its destination is already seen and celebrated in our Lord Jesus Christ today. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. And now let us affirm our faith using the ancient words of the Nicene Creed, saying together, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, and justice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, and George R. Sumner, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers for all who serve God in his church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone and so uphold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with me. We have a few announcements for you today. Hi friends, here are your announcements. 
Our next men's breakfast is happening Saturday, September 12th at 8 a.m. at White Rock Trail Park. They will be meeting live, in person, and six feet apart. The topic for discussion this month is miracles. Contact Don at resurrectionplano.org with any questions. I'd like to keep you abreast of the training I'm going through to be a member of, uh, to be a deputy at the next general convention of the Episcopal Church. I'll be participating in a webinar, webinar that is about how the democratic processes within the Episcopal Church can help with racial reconciliation. I'll be taking part in that webinar on Tuesday, September 15th. We will have a guest preacher on Sunday, October 25th. We're very honored to welcome Reverend Canaan Victor Lee Austin. He has a new book out that is about friendship, and I hope that you'll check it out. I suspect that that will be the topic of his sermon that week. Please remember to check out our Children's Chapel videos. Miss Janice is getting them to us early so that you can check them out early and gather any craft supplies you might need. Our Children's Chapel videos are on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Remember that communion pickup is Saturdays from 11 until noon. You can pick up communion wafers, uh, the host, or N95 masks if you need them. Just send me a text and let me know how many you need. Please join us for virtual coffee hour on Sundays at 9.30 in the morning. It's just great to check in and see your friends' faces. We love that time and we hope that you will join us. As always, we have convenient ways to give. You can give online at resurrectionplano.org. You can mail in a check or you can text to give. Just send a text to 73256. Type in resplano is our keyword and the amount you'd like to give. Thanks so much. And if it is your birthday this week, we have this prayer and blessing for you. Let us pray, saying together, Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And if you have an anniversary coming up, happy anniversary to you. And let me say this prayer and blessing for you. All praise and blessing to you, God of love, source of blessing for married life. All praise to you for you have created courtship and marriage, joy and gladness, feasting and laughter, pleasure and delight. May your blessing come in full upon them. May they know your presence in their joys and in their sorrows. May they reach old age in the company of friends and come at last to your eternal kingdom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you and also with me. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. If you were able to pick up communion, uh, before the service this Sunday, now would be the time to take it. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. Amen. And if you were unable to pick up communion, we have this prayer of spiritual communion that we say together. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory and particularly for the blessings given me. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. 
let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until, by your grace, I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Now let us gather our thoughts of thanksgiving using the post-communion prayer found on page 7 in your bulletin. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work that you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for being with us today. I pray that you have a blessed week, and we'll see you back here next time. Take care, and God bless. <laughs>